Peru is the top producer of gold in Latin America and the second largest producer of silver, copper, and zinc in the world. We promote our mining activities in harmony with the environment and respecting the rights of our rural communities and welcome private investment as a source for constant development. Come to Peru, explore, invest, and grow with us. Good morning, Australia. Good afternoon, Peru. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining La Hora Peruana, the Peruvian Hour at IMAR Online 2020. My name is Miguel Palomino de la Gala, Ambassador of Peru in Australia. Let me start by saying that IMAR is a valuable opportunity to showcase my country, Peru, as an investment destination. It is also a valuable opportunity for the Peruvian mining industry to connect key persons of the mining sector, as well as equipment, technology, and services sectors, not only for Australia, but from the Asia Pacific region. What are the mining flags of Peru that I would like to mention? First, the Peru-Australia Free Trade Agreement, or PAPTA, entered into force on the 12th February 2020. The PAPTA contains ambitious provisions to boost bilateral trade in services like mining services and financial sectors. The treaty recognizes that technology can play a key role in the expansion of trade and investment between the parties. The agreement also states that technology-related policies can help parties to maximize the benefits of the agreement and therefore the parties will encourage the design of policies in this area, taking into consideration the trade and investment opportunities arising from the agreement. Australia currently exports mining services and technology to Peru. Therefore, we expect Australia to increase the exportation of technology for the mining industry, but also investment into the mining industry. Second, we must highlight that in Peru, the power required for mining is not as expensive as in other countries. Human resources are not only highly qualified, but also competitive, and uh, we have an enormous geological wealth ample investment opportunities and portfolio of projects ready to be executed. And of course, numerous Australian companies already participate in the mining projects that are in development in Peru. The METS, uh, Australian sector, mining equipment, technology and services can offer innovative solutions of high quality for the Peruvian mining sector that will contribute to sustained productivity and competitiveness. Third, Peru is a country with a mining vocation due to the important deposits that it possesses and because mining has also played an important role for its development and growth. It is due to the great economic contribution of mining as well as its ability to generate productive change and create uh, development pools in remote places where it stimulates economic activities and boosts infrastructure and employment as well as uh, the improvement of basic services, education and health. Fourth, Peru has shown especially in recent times that it is a country with a strong institutions and a country that shares with Australia democratic values, the rule of law and free trade, and also has a solid and secure framework for foreign investment. To all of you 
on behalf of the government of Peru, I extend a warm invitation to invest in my country. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Ricardo Labo, our moderator. Thank you, Ambassador Palomino, for your opening words. My name is Ricardo Labo, and I am the Executive Director of the Australia Peru Chamber of Commerce. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this special session prepared for IMAC delegates focused on Peru. This session is possible to a public-private partnership between government institutions and private companies and organizations linked to the mining sector in Peru. For the next hour, you have the opportunity to listen to four keynote presentations from the Ministry of Energy and Mines of Peru, the Peruvian Institute of Mining Engineers, the Peruvian Geological Survey, and the Mining Cluster of Southern Peru. These presentations will allow you to understand better the geological potential, the mining and investment opportunities, the main legal framework of Peru, and also the innovation initiatives that the country has started. All this brings great opportunities to Australian investors. Australia and Peru have been working closely these past years to promote more investment and trade between both countries. A free trade agreement between both of them entered into force earlier this year. We will end the session with a closing remarks from the President of the Australia-Peru Chamber of Commerce and the Australian Ambassador to Peru. Thank you, and we are sure you will enjoy the session, and please visit our virtual booth for more information about Peru and the mining sector. Now we will start the session with the Minister of Energy and Mines of Peru. Please, Minister. Peru is located in the central and western part of South America. In its more than 1.28 million square kilometers of surface, it holds vast natural and cultural wealth and is home to more than 30 million people. My land is an outpouring of love, wrote singer-songwriter Chabuca Granda Largo, expressing her fascination for Peru in the song Bello Durmienti. At an early age, Chabuca Granda, born in a mining camp in Apurimac, discovered that the sustainable use of natural resources and cultural diversity are undeniable opportunities for the country to achieve sustainable and harmonious development. The first cultures that appeared in ancient Peru masterfully worked with gold and silver, among other metals. Over the centuries, a robust polymetallic mining industry arose and has reached an impressive level over the past few decades. Today, Peru is an example of success in the global mining industry. It is the main producer of gold, lead, zinc, and tin in Latin America, as well as the second largest producer of copper and silver in the world. In terms of reserves, it is the global leader in silver and the Latin American leader for lead. Interestingly, to date, mining activity is carried out in only 1.2% of the territory which gives a clear idea of the geological potential that has yet to be explored. In the ongoing effort to reactivate the economy, following the impact of the pandemic, mining activity plays a crucial role. El sector minero estuvo en la primera línea de la reactivación económica impulsada por el gobierno. La minería peruana es una actividad moderna y sostenible, con altos estándares de salud y seguridad que se adaptó con rapidez al protocolo sanitario del Ministerio de Energía y Minas y a las disposiciones del gobierno frente a la pandemia. De forma progresiva y segura, se reanudaron las operaciones de todos los estratos de la minería y la construcción de proyectos como Queyabeco, Mina Justa y Ampliación Toromocho. Hoy vemos una sostenida recuperación que se reflejará en un importante impulso a la economía. At the end of the third quarter of 2020, metal mining production posted a positive and encouraging trend, with copper, gold and zinc production exceeding the previous quarter, underscoring the progressive recovery of the mining sector. En el 2019, el Perú alcanzó una cifra récord en la producción de cobre, con un total de 2.45 millones de toneladas métricas finas. Con la puesta en operación comercial de Mina Justa en el primer semestre, 
del 2021, nos encaminaremos a superar los 2.5 millones de toneladas métricas finas de cobre en el país. El Perú ofrece a los inversionistas costos competitivos para el desarrollo de proyectos cupríferos, una característica valorada por los inversionistas. El marco tributario que rige la actividad minera es competitivo en comparación con otros países de la región. Estos factores internos, sumados a las favorables tendencias en metales como el cobre y el oro, dos de nuestros principales productos de exportación, corroboran que el Perú sigue siendo una plaza atractiva para desarrollar la actividad minera. In the last 20 years, more than 70 billion dollars have been invested in the development of mining projects in Peru. A significant number of those projects are world-class mining operations, employing tens of thousands of people. The 2020 to 2029 mine construction project portfolio includes 46 projects that represent a joint investment of $56 billion. By 2021, seven projects totaling $3.58 billion are expected, among them Newmont Mining's Yanacocha Sulfides Venture. The current exploration project portfolio includes 64 projects, representing an investment of about $500 million. At the same time, thousands of mining claims are being granted to individuals and companies who wish to explore Peru's territory. The government is redoubling its efforts to ensure that all projects can be developed and executed in the shortest possible time, and in a climate of social peace, to promote sustainable development in mining regions. Estamos implementando el círculo virtuoso para el aprovechamiento sostenible de los recursos mineroenergéticos, que contempla una mayor articulación entre el Estado, la empresa privada y la población. Queremos fortalecer la sostenibilidad y la competitividad de la actividad minera, consolidando un clima de diálogo y confianza para la población y los inversionistas. Impulsamos el desarrollo territorial y el cierre de brechas a través del uso eficiente y ágil de los recursos generados por la minería, con el objetivo de viabilizar la ejecución de los proyectos en cartera, garantizar la continuidad de las operaciones existentes y fomentar la exploración. El derrotero de la gestión se enmarca en la visión de la minería al 2030, que hemos construido en el Centro de Convergencias y Buenas Prácticas Mineroenergéticas RIMAI con la participación del Estado, empresas, sociedad civil y academia. On the competitive side, the ministry is carrying out a careful analysis of the recommendations made by the Commission for Sustainable Mining Development, which aim to optimize and improve the normative and regulatory framework for mining. Nuestro énfasis está puesto en plantear el acuerdo previo en la fase de exploración. Queremos impulsar inversiones que permitan encontrar nuevos yacimientos. Promoveremos la participación y articulación entre el Estado, la empresa y la comunidad indígena. El objetivo es optimizar los plazos sin relajar el rigor del diálogo intercultural que contempla la consulta previa ni los requisitos establecidos en el marco legal. Other recommendations propose to complete an official database on indigenous communities, strengthen the traceability of the regional mining tax and the transparency in its use, develop state policy for the sustainable development of the mining sector at the Center for Convergence and Good Mining Energy Practices, and prioritize the remediation of mining environmental liabilities. In October 2020, publicó the new Reglamento de Procedimientos Mineros que actualiza un marco legal vigente hace 27 años. Los principales aportes y modificaciones del reglamento están orientados a la simplificación, predictibilidad, sistematización y optimización de plazos de los procedimientos administrativos. Se ha dispuesto el silencio administrativo positivo para 19 de 34 procedimientos administrativos. En septiembre pasado se realizaron mejoras al Reglamento de Protección Ambiental de Exploración Minera para brindar un marco legal claro y predecible a los inversionistas. La simplificación administrativa y reducción de plazos realizadas no implican ningún relajamiento de los estándares ambientales 
ni de la participación ciudadana. Se ha dispuesto, entre otros cambios, el silencio administrativo positivo para la evaluación de la ficha técnica ambiental, un aspecto que agilizará el desarrollo de los proyectos. A fines del 2019, se amplió el beneficio de la devolución del Impuesto General a las Ventas y del Impuesto de Promoción Municipal IPM a los titulares que realicen exploración minera e hidrocarburífera hasta el 31 de diciembre del 2022. De esta forma, brindamos mayor predictibilidad y alentamos a que se desarrollen nuevas campañas de exploración. De igual forma, se autorizó que los titulares con contratos de estabilidad tributaria a 15 años puedan llevar su contabilidad en dólares, entre otros esfuerzos. The government promotes dialogue and coordination to ensure the sustainable development of the energy and mining sectors. A preventive approach is being implemented in the management of social conflicts through the strengthening of the General Office for Social Management, or OGGS, and the installation of the Energy Mining Management Committee in relevant regions, among other efforts. Tenemos el compromiso de construir y consolidar un clima de paz social que logre la viabilidad y sostenibilidad de las inversiones en el sector, buscando en paralelo el progreso y bienestar de las personas. Hemos creado los Comités de Gestión Minero Energético como un espacio de coordinación y diálogo que congrega tanto al gobierno en sus distintos niveles y sectores como a la empresa y a la población para generar consensos, atender a las poblaciones e impulsar su progreso a través de las inversiones en minería, hidrocarburos y electricidad. El primer comité ha sido instalado en Moquegua, región donde se construye el proyecto Queyabeco y en poco tiempo ha generado ya un mayor acercamiento con las autoridades y líderes locales. Próximamente instalaremos el Comité de Gestión de Cajamarca, Loreto y en otras regiones con actividad minero-energética que serán priorizadas. The strengthening of the General Office for Social Management includes the formation of a team to implement prior consultation, develop a territorial approach for conflict management, incorporate prevention actions with greater intergovernmental coordination, as well as improve governance and monitoring of social investment. Estamos promoviendo un diálogo permanente en las localidades donde cruza el Corredor Vial Sur. Tenemos reuniones frecuentes con las autoridades y líderes de Espinar y Chumbivilcas, en Cusco, y de Cotabambas, en Apurímac. Queremos recuperar la confianza y resolver las preocupaciones de la gente para consolidar un clima de paz social en el que se puedan desarrollar las inversiones. Con este breve resumen del potencial de la minería peruana, del enfoque de la gestión y de las iniciativas que estamos impulsando, quiero dejar un mensaje de confianza a los inversionistas. Para el gobierno peruano, la minería es una actividad estratégica y fundamental. Tengan la seguridad que seguirán recibiendo noticias de nuevos esfuerzos orientados a fortalecer el atractivo del Perú para las inversiones mineras a través de la mejora de nuestro marco regulatorio y la construcción de un clima social favorable. Invito a los inversionistas mineros de Australia y de todo el mundo a conocer más del potencial geológico peruano y de las oportunidades que ofrecemos para que puedan llevar a cabo nuevos proyectos. Thank you, Minister, for your explanation. Now we'll have the presentation of Miguel Cardoso, Vice President of the Peruvian Institute of Mining Engineers. Please, Miguel. First of all, thank you very much to the organizers of EMARC for hosting this great conference and for the opportunity to present here on behalf of the Peruvian delegation and the Institute of Mining Engineers of Peru. Today, I would like to offer all of you a compilation of various data sets that I have put together to provide an overview of Peru as a world-class mining country with an immense mineral potential to continue growing towards a richer, inclusive, equitable, and stable society. The following figures uh, demonstrate that Peru is in fact a world-class mining country competing in the global big leagues. In the case of the main metals produced by our country, we are the largest of the second or the second largest producers in Latin America and are as well located in the top positions of the world ranking, as you can see in this, uh, in this table. 
This applies to mining production and resources as well. The country produces mainly copper and gold, but also silver, zinc, lead, molybdenum, tin, and other metals. Mining investment, as shown in this graph, is by far the main um, is it have far the main contribution in Peru to further develop its economy. In terms of production, Peru experienced uh, a significant gold rush, increasing its gold production from half a million to 6.7 million ounces of gold between 1992 and 2005, as you can see in this chart. And it moved now into a copper boom, doubling its copper production from 1.3 to 2.6 million tons of fine copper between 2014 and 2019, as shown in this slide. And we still have potential to continue growing up to uh, 5 million tons of fine copper with the current project portfolio. The portfolio of projects at, are at construction and uh, pre-construction st stages, namely 48 projects requiring CAPES investment of almost 58,000 million US dollars. Exploration projects registered by the Ministry of Energy and Mines are 63 projects with an investment of almost 500 million in 2009. Peru is also one of the top investment destinations in the world. <clears throat> Uh, fluctuating between the third and the seventh position in the world ranking. And it has been positioned within the five largest exploration investment destinations in the last four years. Peru has numerous mineralized belts along its Andean Cordillera, which have an extraordinary mining potential. Here, there is an extremely simplified conceptual east-west cross-section summarizing the lithological units form the upper crust in the Peruvian Andes. It shows thick, mainly Paleozoic to Upper Cretaceous marine sedimentary volcanic sequence, followed by terrestrial clastic sequence and intense superior volcanic products. A long history of intense magmatism <clears throat> occurred in multiple episodes and belts interacted, interacting with the intruded host rock units. Intrusive rocks range from deep batholithic to subvolcanic settings. As a result of this interaction, an impressive geological diversity emerged, creating mineral deposits of various types, as shown in the legend, and a polymetallic endowment that characterized and enhanced the mining potential of Peru. <clears throat> of all multiple mineralized belt, belts along the Peruvian Andes, five major belts contribute with 85% of the mineral production of the country, namely three porphyry belts, one epithermal belt, and one polymetallic belt hosting a variety of hydrothermal mineral deposits. Half of the copper production of Peru mostly comes from these three porphyry belts that all together add to 2,300 kilometers of magmatic central mineralized systems, all of them of tertiary age from the Paleocene to Miocene uh, geological times. The 300 kilometers long Paleocene porphyry belt in the southwestern corner of Peru hosts exceptionally large porphyries that have been the historic main copper producers in Peru for more than 50 years namely the Cuajone and Toquepala mines, with more than 2,000 million tons of ore grading 0.5% copper with Mori credits, credits each. The 800 kilometers long Eocene Oligocene porphyry scan belt is an emerging mining producer in southeastern Peru with mid to large size deposits that in many cases are enhanced in terms of ore grade by the presence of substantial high grade scan bodies, namely the today exhausted entire mine with 400 million tons um, with 1.4% copper uh, average. <clears throat> the Miocene belt extends for uh, 1,200 kilometers along the Western Cordillera 
from the northern end of Peru to the central south part of the country. This is also an emerging belt with great potential for copper porphyries and scarn, like the copper zinc giant Antamina mine with more than 800 million tons of ore, averaging 0.93% copper, 0.6% zinc, plus other metals like bismuth, molybdenum, moly uh, silver, and lead. And La Granja project with 2,800 million tons uh, with 0.51% copper. And Toromocho with 4.1 billion uh, tons of ore with 0.5% copper and 6.9 grams per ton silver. The four important belts um, runs for 2,000 kilometers along the whole of the Cordillera from the northern to the southern borders of Peru. It hosts the giant epithermal Yanacocha mine with 50 million ounces of gold in resources and the Pierina and Laguna Norte epithermal deposits with nine and 14 million ounces of gold respectively. Additionally, the small to mid-sized heap leachable epithermal deposits and high-grade low sulfidation space systems are operating uh, and occur along this belt. The fifth most relevant belt is the Central Peru Polymetallic Belt, where base metals, frequently silver-rich deposits, occur. This belt is one of is the one that positions Peru as the second global producer of zinc, lead, and silver in the world. Main deposit types are magmatic centers, cans, replacement, vein, and brescia bodies, but also copper porphyries occur in these geological environments. <clears throat> Besides the described belts, numerous other belts occur in the Peruvian Cordillera, including all kinds of deposits like porphyry, scan, replacement bodies, etc. In summary, Peru has a fantastic geology, world-class operating mines, and a superb mineral potential considering that modern exploration just started 35 years ago, and most discoveries today have been of outcropping mineralization, and that just a small portion of our territory has been, has been explored so far. Besides it, Peru offers excellent potential for low operating cost mines, main exploration play in Latin, Amer in Latin America, $541 million in 2019, a steady economic growth, low inflation, a stable investment rules, increasing investment, unrestricted marketing of production, tax-free repatriation of profits and dividends. And we have a geological survey in Junmet that through GeoCAT mean software uh, offers an effective mining traffic system and many excellent geological uh, databases. And in, at the Institute of Mining Engineers of Peru, we offer to the whole mining community Pro Explore 2021 in March uh, next March, uh, it will be a great event for explorers. Uh, it's one of the largest in Latin America and is very well attended. And we are offering uh, significant short courses, as you can see from this list, uh, looking at the names of the presenters. And besides that, in September next year also, it, it, it will be held one of the largest uh, mining events in the world, Perumín celebrating 200s of the um, uh, of uh, the Peru Republic Republic of Peru uh, it will be be centennial uh, Peruming for all of us you are invited to both events thank you very much and see you around in the conference thank you Miguel for explaining us about the mineral endowment and investment opportunities in Peru now let me introduce you to the presentation of Susana Vilca President of Peru's Geological Survey. Please, Susana. Mis 
Warm greetings to all who are connected to this virtual presentation. My name is Magister Susana Vilca Achata, Executive President of the Geological Mining and Metallurgical Institute in Jemet, in Peru. INGEMET is a governing institution that has two fundamental roles. The first one is research, which generates genetical knowledge. And second, the granting rule, which is focused on the granting of concession titles on behalf of the state. We promote social and economic development for the country with these two rules. Our geology has a span of over 1.8 million years. Thus, the geological section, as shown on the slide, the cross sections shows our structural geology that goes from Mardi Gras to the Lao Jungle. We are located in a subduction zone. Additionally, the cortical domains or transects shows that this magnetotelluric section is seen in the lower part through the geophysics. And that the cortical structure has different physical properties. This is very important for mining investment because there we're going to be able to see the deposition of different economic elements. We are going to continue carrying out this type of work. We have already programmed research projects. For example, by next year, we are planning to better equip ourselves and gradually have a series of these sections nationwide. We also have the National Geological Chart, a 1,000 key scale map, 500, 100 key scale maps, and 918, 50 key scale maps. Related to geochemistry, we have 22,928 registered stream sediment samples. Thus, between 30 and 50 chemical elements have been analyzed. Besides, we have 1,890 geochemical anomalies with economic relevance. Regarding endowments, in geochronology, we have 3,794 samples to know the precision of the age of the rocks. To know the exhumation of rocks, in thermochronology, we hold with 1,206 samples. In terms of the geological and metallurgic potential, we have strategic ferrous and precious metals as well as base metals. And as I've shown in this section, each point in the national territory represents production units. Concerning metallogenic belts, we have 23 of them. Thus, they are all studied according to the age mineralization, type of deposit, type of economic elements, size and grade of the mineral deposit, as well as the production belts, its reserve and other resources as well. Besides, we have areas of known admission of petition. These are called ANAP. The purpose is to support investment in exploration. Nowadays, there are two ANAP that are already awarded in public action. We have CANAP with high potential, five of them with geophysical data, then 10 ANAP with geochemical data, and we have two others that are still entering studies. We're still just waiting for the moment to go to work due to some social issues. Currently, we have been working on the GeoProMine platform. What is this? What does it mean? We have the free claim areas, which occurrences are published throughout the year. These areas of free claims will be studied with all the data we already have, according to the mining exploration targets. These facts will precisely facilitate investment in exploration. 
On the other side, concerning the non-metallic geological mining potential, we can find bentonite, limestone, diatomite, and phosphates. We have big projects, for instance, the Bayer project, and the other ones in Honing, in the center of the country. Likewise, we have an online platform that is widely known. It is GeoCadbin, which is a free access platform that is constantly updated. It contains geology and mining data in more than 200 layers of virtual access. Regarding the new mining tailor procedure and granting rules, the new mining procedure regulation published last August, they aim to simplify and standardize procedures. Additionally, they aim to eliminate requirements, incorporate procedures subject to positive administrative silence, promote speed in the evaluation, generate predictability in procedures, and encourage trust and legal security for mining investment. Ingemet is currently working on an online request project. Anyone will be able to access from anywhere in the world in order to make their request. Furthermore, Sirencat, the cadastral mining rights system, according to the latest Supreme Decree number 20, allows access to information in real time in order that the mining administrative procedure responds to the principle of certainty, simplicity, publicity, uniformity, and efficiency. It also contains graphic and alphanumeric data on mining rights at national level, as well as file images that are digitized or the relevant data and decision-making in mining administrative procedures. SirenCAT is a noteworthy virtual platform with direct access at zero cost. Our national mining cadastry shows the following results. 14.78% of the national territory is covered by mining rights and 33.92% of the territory with restricted areas. For instance, protected areas, natural areas, urban spatial areas, ports, airports, national defense areas, among others. But the 51.79% of the territory indicates a non-restricted area. This means a mining investment can be made on it. As shown throughout the exhibition, we have activities and specializations in geochemistry, geophysics, laboratory analysis, remote sensing, lithology, geochronology, among others, in addition to our granting rule. We invite you to visit our Geocademy platform, Ingemet website, and all its other activities. So now, here's our institutional video presentation. Thanks for your time. Peru is a country with immense wealth to discover. Its geological potential is based on its diverse types of lithology and the age of its rocks, which vary from 1,862 million years old to zero-year-old rocks. These characteristics, added to its geographical location, have established a favorable context to form world-class mineral deposits, such as gold, copper, and mainly iron, which places our country as the main producers in South America and the world. The Geological Mining and Metallurgical Institute, INGEMET, is a geological survey of Peru, which generates and provides geological information, grants and manages mining rights for the general public, as well as public and private entities, with a speed transparency and legal security. Thus, 
Ingemet has several research projects, such as metallogeny. Ingemet is currently in primary artificial intelligence in the development of the National Geological Chart with a purpose of providing a better service. The geological maps of the National Geological Chart represent the progress of scientific studies in all geology branches. Furthermore, the geoenvironmental baseline studies are a geoenvironmental management tool to benefit the population and the state, which allow us to know the chemical variation of the water and its possible natural or anthropic contamination. Ingemet, at the forefront of technology, has the Cadastry and Mining Rights System Siren Cat, which allow us to ask for general data on mining rights information on payments for validity and penalties, as well as viewing files in digital format and on writing them in PDF format for proper and timely management. Likewise, you can also access the Geological and Mining Cadastre Information System, GeoCatbin, which is a virtual platform with more than 200 layers of information. Mining activity in Peru requires research in mineral deposits to show new models for exploration and methods for discovering new deposits. In Ingemet, we pursue this objective by conducting studies focused on highlighting the strategic metals that they may contain. Thus, we have geochemical results for more than 25,000 samples of rocks sediments and ores. Likewise, lithium studies have been completed in Peru and geochemical information of nearly 500 samples are available to investors. In order to give a value to mining tiling, mineralogical and geochemical characterization studies are carried out to know the strategic elements they may contain. Ingemet has been applying the use of new technologies, such as machine learning, business intelligence, among others, to determine the regional mining potential based on geological mining variables. Thank you, Susana, for showing us the geological potential in Peru. And now we'll have a conversation between Benjamin Quijandria, board member of the mining cluster of Southern Peru, and Augusto Cauti, independent consultant. Good morning, and thanks to, to IMARC for the opportunity. I am Augusto Cauti, former Peruvian Mines Deputy Minister, and currently a consultant in the private sector. And we are going to present a public-private vision on the mining providers chain value in Peru. It's important how it's been developed and what to expect from the same in the future. Good morning, uh, greetings from Lima, Peru. My name is Benjamin Quijandria, and thank you very much to IMARC for the opportunity. And well, now let's talk about the importance of Peruvian METS ecosystem. Uh, this is a sector has grown a lot in the recent uh, years in, in Peru. Uh, so let's see the agenda, shall we, Augusto? Oh, yes, actually we're gonna First, talk uh, on the importance of the Peruvian supply chain for the mining sector in Peru. Then we are gonna present the situation of the mining supply chain in our country. Uh, and then we, we're going to talk about the current challenges uh, of the Peruvian mining supply chain. And, and finally, about the future development of METS ecosystem in, in Peru. Thanks. Well, let's start with the importance of the Peruvian supply chain for the mining sector. As we know, uh, Peru during the last uh, 20, 25 years has been consistently growth and the mining sector has been very relevant for accomplish this in our country. Actually, since Yanacocha in 93 and Antamina in 2000, modern mining with world-class mines have been developed here and of course 
the results of the sector within these times, ranking the top five countries in research and production of the most commercial minerals worldwide. 100% growth of copper production during the last 10 year period, around 60% of the total national exports, uh, approximately between eight to 11 points of the country's GDP during the last 10 to 20 years, approximately 15% of private investments in the last five years, close to 5% of the economically active population, plus the indirect uh, jobs that it generates, support the importance of the Peru mining sector coupled to our tradition and knowledge of these activities by our human resource. And of course, in doing so, the provider's chain value has had a very critical role. And actually, Benjamin, what is the situation of this uh, supply chain in the country? Well, uh, indeed, Augusto, uh, Peruvian Mets uh, are very uh, important also, such as mining to the economy. Uh, uh, and that happens also in other mining uh, countries. As we can see, uh, thanks to suppliers in Australia and Canada, mining contribution to their GDP has almost doubled. In the case of, of Chile, uh, we can see an impressive contribution of METs of 7% of GDP. And in Peru, uh, it represents 3%. Uh, since we still have an ecosystem in development uh, stage. Uh, in terms of, of export, the contribution of METs is also uh, uh, very important. We, we can see uh, that, uh, the evolution of, of MET exports over the past uh, uh, 20 year, years. Just as mining activity has grown a lot uh, in these years, uh, so have suppliers. No? So we can see in, in this graph, in, in year uh, 2000, uh, exports were uh, very incipient. However, in 2019, we see great growth uh, where the central region stands out uh, thanks to Lima with the three quarter of Mets total export. Uh, so that, that's, that's really why we must promote mining clusters in, in, in Peru, as we have discussed uh, that, uh, Augusto. And, and uh, the other thing uh, important um, uh, is employment. Uh, it, it has a, a huge contribution on, of, of meds for each uh, job in mining, uh, six more are generated in other sectors. That is significant contribution in employment uh, to the country. Uh, so another important issue are the current challenges for the meds in, in Peru. Augusto, maybe you can show us what are those challenges? Well, actually, yes, no? as, as the mining sector, uh, the supply chain uh, in Peru has also uh, going through these challenges that we have faced since the pandemic uh, came to Peru at the beginning of this, of this year. And as the mines, the providers has not been exempted from that impact. No? Therefore, we can say that current challenges for the industry and for the mining providers in particular uh, are related to availability of personnel, are related to logistics to obtain products and to deliver their results, to health and safety matters, how to, to develop, how to, to produce what they are doing within these uh, complex times, the increase of cost for operations because of this situation the relationship with the communities who are lacking needs during this emergency situation, which actually uh, put more uh, complex to the, to the situation of the development of the mines. And, and also the technology, innovation, automatization that are uh, key issues for the, the actual, the current challenges that the sector and the providers are facing now. I would say those are the principal uh, or, or main concerns to face within these uh, coming times. Of course, it has to be uh, cooperate uh, both by the providers and the mine sectors in order to overcome those. But in the future, we still have 
the, the main and the future challenges for the mining sector, which are basically how to become in a more sustainable sector, environmentally, socially, which are part of the agenda that we had before the pandemics and that will keep uh, and are now, even now, and will keep in the future uh, impacting the sector. And we have to overcome uh, jointly the private and the public sector. But actually, there are some initiatives uh, in doing so that are being worked by the, by the suppliers and the mines in jointly and by the private and, and public sector. Can you tell us, Benjamin, uh, one of these initiatives or how are they working? Yes, of course. Uh, um, um, well, I, I actually had the opportunity to present the initiative Southern Peruvian Miner Cluster uh, in the last edition of, of IMARC uh, last year. Uh, as a reminder, this is an initiative that is the, uh, is the partnership of CAF, the Development Bank of Latin America, and the Chamber of Commerce of, of Arequipa. Uh, in this initiative, uh, we currently have four major mining companies in, in, in South of Peru uh, as partners, such as uh, Hadway Minerals, um, Anglo American, Southern Copper, and Cerro Verde uh, uh, of uh, Freeport uh, uh, McMoran. Um, and we are aiming that other may, major companies uh, join us. Uh, but in this stage, it's very important to share about our open innovation program. That is very related, actually, about the challenges you, you are talking about, uh, Augusto, because this program uh, identifies operational challenges in our partner, uh, mining partners and present them to METs that have potential solutions to these challenges. In fact, we have already received some uh, proposals from, from Australian solutions uh, uh, and, and other countries, of, of course, uh, uh, of Peru uh, too, um, in the latest uh, challenges. And we look forward to having more participation of Australian companies in the forthcoming uh, 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 calls. Um, the open innovation is, is, is a, a central part of the strategy of the uh, Southern Peruvian uh, uh, mining cluster. But also uh, in Peru, we have other initiatives that aims to foster innovation uh, uh, in mining uh, and in METs. Um, Augusto, what, what can you tell us about, about that? Uh, well, actually, it's, it's very interesting what the mining cluster in the South has been doing uh, in Peru to promote and foster this participation between providers and mining companies. But there are, all, there are another two initiatives, actually one of them, the technological roadmap, uh, I had the opportunity to present it in IMARC uh, last year. Uh, while, while I made the presentation as, 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 vice, as vice minister, and I can tell you that actually this year in June, we launched this uh, technological uh, roadmap uh, for the providers in the mining sector with the private sector. Uh, and we believe this is an initiative that will foster the, the providers of technology in our country to be more competitive, to be uh, more efficient to, to the private sector. And, and this initiative is also complemented by another initiative, which is the Hub Innovation in Peru, which is also shown in this in this uh, in this film, and 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 which which also is looking to promote more innovation and look for appropriate and personalized solutions to specific problems for the mining sector. So, in, in general, I can say we have these three initiatives that are also uh, looking for for overcoming this sustainable development of mining in. In Peru is part of the effort that we are all we are all doing. We have the cluster mines uh, in the south, which is a, a, a proposal by the by the mines and the and the providers. We have the innovation hub by the mines, which are presenting their own problems, and we have this uh, technical route promoted by the government. So we believe that this all together. Of course, we we'll need the support of cooperation and allies from, from other countries, uh, countries like Australia, which has really good experience on this, uh, in order to, to, to look for this efficient, competitive mining ecosystem uh, of, of providers 
in, in Peru that could offer not only to our country, but in general to the world, uh, what we believe is this tradition and experience for years of mining uh, sector in our uh, mining country, uh, Peru. Uh, with this, uh, I just want to, to finalize uh, showing the, the goals that, that we have, that we are all have in mind for, for the providers ecosystem. And of course, we'll have time to, to talk further in the coming weeks with, with you if you are interested on this. Uh, and this is all by myself, from myself. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, to, to IMARC. Uh, uh, I think th this space is very important for Peru to, to show what uh, uh, the industry of METS uh, have been doing, uh, all this initiative to, to aim to foster uh, innovation um, and, and build a, a, an ecosystem. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melbourne. Thank you, IMARC. And greetings and see you uh, next year. Thank you, Benjamin and Augusto, for your insights about the innovation process that is being developed in Peru. And now, we'll have the final words from Maria Alejandra Delgado, President of the Australia-Peru Chamber of Commerce, and Diana Nelson, Ambassador of Australia in Peru. Thank you again, and you are all very welcome to Peru. Dear IMAC delegates, thank you for participating and your interest in Peru. Today, you have been able to appreciate that Peru is full of mining opportunities. Peru provides mining investors a great mineral potential, stable legal framework, and experienced workforce. Peru has also started its path to drive innovation and technological improvement as part of its mining development. That also brings collaboration opportunities for Australian METs. As Australia-Peru Chamber of Commerce, we welcome your investment into Peru and please count on us to guide you in your process. We invite you now to visit Peru's booth for more information. This year, we became Supporting Chamber of Commerce partner of IMARC and we are proud and committed to make this partnership between IMARC, Australia and Peru a big success for all. Looking forward to seeing you this time in person in IMARC 2021. Hello, my name is Diana Nelson and I'm the Australian Ambassador in Peru. Thank you for joining us today for this fantastic session of IMARC 2020 focused on the opportunities available in Peru. Australia and Peru have a strong and growing relationship which is underpinned by our mining connections. We are one of the largest investors in Peru's mining sector and have more than 80 companies with a mining focus who have a presence here in Peru. Uh, companies such as Asenco uh, have based their regional operations in this country. Uh, Asenco's largest international office is in Lima. As a result of being in a post-COVID or a COVID normal environment, many mines are looking to change the way they operate and are looking to find further efficiencies and greater productivity in some cases to make up for production lost earlier in the pandemic. What we are finding is that this is opening up very many new opportunities for Australian suppliers, Australian MET suppliers of technology and services. Austrade, with an office here in Lima, is seeing unprecedented interest from Australian mining com companies in coming to Peru and many more are looking to set up and have a presence here. Peru looks to Australia very much as a model for a country that has successfully developed sustainable mining and would like to emulate what we have done. For this reason, I'm delighted to announce that Australia has been invited to be and has accepted to be the inaugural country partner for Peru Min 2021, which will be carried out next year in Peru's bicentennial year and which will give us a marvellous platform to showcase what Australia has to offer in the mining sector. I'm delighted that so many of you were able to join us here today. I hope we've whet your appetite to come and have a look at the opportunities on offer in Peru. 
I'd like to congratulate the organisers of this event and in particular the Australia-Peru Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much and we hope to see you in Peru soon for a Pisco Sour or two. Peru is a top producer of gold in Latin America and the second largest producer of silver, copper and zinc in the world. We promote our mining activities in harmony with the environment and respecting the rights of our rural communities and welcome private investment as a source for constant development. Come to Peru, explore, invest and grow with us.